Welcome to Veranda IAS. In today's current affairs session, in the subject international relations, we will be dealing with the topic Chinese Communist Party or Communist Party of China. So, the learning objective of today's LU is to discuss about the Communist Party of China that is CPC and to discuss about the CPC and why it is in news now and to discuss the background of CPC. So, moving on, let us discuss about the CPC. So, the Chinese Communist Party CCP officially the CPC is the, the Chinese Communist Party that is the CCP officially the CPC is the People's Republic of China's PRC's founding and sole ruling party. The United Front is made up of CCP and eight others legally allowed minor parties. So, in China there is a single party ruling. So, that is the CCP or CPC. So, there will be another minor parties. So, eight other legally allowed minor parties. But the ruling party is eventually the CCP. It is a single party country. The CPC the, has uh, focused, the CCP has focused its party to party connections with the ruling parties of surviving socialist states since the collapse of the Eastern European Communist government in 1989 to 1990 and the dissolution of the erstwhile Soviet Union in 1991. So, what happened? The communist nations, once more powerful, they started to disintegrate during the 1980s and 1990s. The leading uh, communist country, which is the furthermost and the first communist country of the world, that is the Soviet Union, USSR, had uh, disintegrated in uh, 1991. But the Chinese government, the Chinese Communist Party had sustained all this year and it had became one of the most powerful country in the world. Further, it has established a relationship with a number of non-communist parties uh, since 1980s and most notably ruling parties of one party states dominant parties in democracies and social democratic parties. So, it does not confine itself to the communist nations relationship with the communist nations. It also opened doors for other nations who are not communist and uh, with uh, its aggressive policies and uh, aggressive military tactics and uh, with its growing economic uh, thing, it had emerged as a greatest party and the greatest country in the world. Further, the CCP has more than 95 million members as of 2021. So, it has 95 million members and making it the world's second largest political party after India's Bharatiya Janda Party. So, which is the topmost, which is the largest political party in the world. So, it is the BJP of India, which is actually followed by the CCP of China. In third, we have the Democratic Party of USA and fourth, we have the Republic Party of USA. So, both these parties are from USA. In fifth, we have the INC of India. So, these are the largest parties in uh, wise, member wise, so all around the country. So, CPC is the second largest party in the world with a member of 95 million members. Further, let us discuss why the CPC is in news as of now. So, on 1st July 2021 in Beijing, commemoration of the 100th anniversary of the founding of CPC, also known as the centennial of the CPC were held to mark the centennial of the founding of CCP, which has governed the People's Republic of China since 1949. So, what happened? It had been 100 years since this party has been found, which has been ruling the country ever since 1949. Further, as the honor, honorary guest of honor, CCP General Secretary Xi Jinping gave a speech and handed the Order of July, the first order of honor to CCP members who had made significant achievements. So, Xi Jinping, that is the president of China, had participated in this event. The premier Li Keqing served as the event official host. So, he served as the official host of the event. Let us talk about the background of CPC and how it got evolved. 
So, we all know that Chinese, the China has a long drawn history. So, it is one of the earliest civilization in the world. We have the Zia's dynasty, which is an uh, semi legendary dynasty. We do not know everything, every facts about the Zia dynasty is true or not because we do not have such kind of records to up to date. It was followed by Qin dynasty and then we have this Han dynasty during which many progressive scientific progress has been made and China had become a greatest nation at that time of Han dynasty. It was again followed by Tang dynasty and finally we have the Qin dynasty. So, Qing dynasty, so that is the last dynasty. In this dynasty only what happened? The imperialistic policy started. The imperialism of the European nation started and eventually China got into the hands of the European powers. So, following the first opium war, second opium war, what had happened is that the Chinese people had lost the confident they had in the monarch and eventually they started to revolt against the monarch and eventually this Qin dynasty was actually overthrown by the popular uprising and in the year 1912 a republic government was actually established. So, it was established by a person called as Sun Yat Sen and the party was called as Kuomintang. So, this is the name of the party Kuomintang and uh, after that we have many revolts which has happened to this government. Eventually what happened is that first after first world war and after the second world war the Japan had invaded China, Japanese invasion. So, because of the Japanese invasion the China cannot with, uh, withstand the assault of Japan it eventually lost and a major portion of China was actually conquered by Japan. And, uh, a large scale of massacre has, has been committed by the Japanese army in the soil of China and eventually people again lost confidence in the government and uh, civil war started after the uh, ending of the second world war that is after 1947 and eventually in the year 1949 the civil war got over and uh, the victorious were actually the communist party of China under the leadership of Mao. So, he is the founding father of uh, CPC and eventually this party got uh, victory and eventually it had uh, developed, created a new country on the Chinese called as the PRC, People Republic of China. So, what happened to this Kuomintang government? It had actually fled and uh, it settled in a country called as Taiwan. Till date, this government was actually climbing the entire China as its own, but uh, there has been a disputes all over the years between the Chinese government and PRC and between this uh, Kuomintang government. So, that is the brief history about how the CPC got into power and how it led to the establishment of the People's Republic of China in the year 1949. So, let us see this it further. The CCP was covertly created in 1921 in the Chinese city of Shanghai. So, Shanghai was the city where the CCP was created by a group of revolutionaries inspired by Russia's Bolshevik revolution less than 15 years prior. So, because of that uh, the uh, victories of the communist party in Russia Bolshevik revolution, uh, this party got established in China. And the Cheng Duxiu, a revolutionary was the CCP's first general secretary. The CPC began its existence as a party led collectively. It began as an ally of Chiang Kai shek's Kuomintang government. So, it actually began as a party led collectively and uh, it 
has had begun its career as an ally to this uh, uh, person, Chang Kai-shek, who was actually at the time was the head of the Kuomintang government. The party chose to abandon its collective leadership character and appointed Mao, Mao Zedong as a core leader in 1935, interesting him with the both party and army command. So both army, army and the party was given under the leadership of Mao Zedong and Mao established the PRC after the civil war on 1st October 1949, signaling the end of the Chinese revolution and thus the PRC was actually created. So further, the Mao Zedong governed China with steely determination and overwhelming strength. In 1958, he initiated an economic initiative called as the Great Leap Forward. So it is an economic reform which was introduced by Mao Zedong and it was misguided attempt to emulate the Soviet policies, but uh, it was an actually a an, uh, misguided attempt. So eventually, this uh, great leap forward has dubbed as a failure attempt. But following Maoist death in 1967, the CCP's leaders eased socialist rules and embraced modified capitalism. So what happened after Mao's death, the CCP's leader, they found that if we progressed through this socialistic manner, if we progress through this communist manner, eventually our country won't sufficient for a long time, eventually they embraced modified capitalism, that is partially capitalism along with some of the features of the communist government. So putting China on track to become the world industrial powerhouse. So it had made China one of the most industrial powerhouses. So it had proved very good for China. Uh, we have seen that USSR it had continued with the policies of Soviet policies, socialistic policies, but even eventually that uh, communi communist government in USSR got uh, disintegrated in the year 1991. So because of that, uh, when we compare to Soviet Union, China was successful and uh, they were uh, visionaries such that uh, they changed their country's economy as to as a modified capitalist country. Chinese President Xi Jinping serves as the CCP's current General Secretary and he is widely regarded as the most powerful Chinese leader since Mao Zedong. So after Mao, the current President Xi Jinping who had visited India last year, he is dubbed as the most powerful Chinese leader since the time of Mao Zedong. Further, he articulated his vision during the 19th Congress which he has held in 2018 proposing to make China the world center of gravity by 2050. So that was his ambitious project of making China the world center of gravity by the year 2050. So aggressive economic territorial invasion, strengthening of uh, communist positions and suppression of descendant are all part of CCP's chief domination, dominating strategies. So aggressive economic policies, uh, providing a debt trap, diplomacy. So everything was part of these Chinese policies and eventually there is a book called as Art of War which is an age old book which was written in the ancient Chinese. So even today the Chinese government is pursuing uh, the what are the things which has, has been uh, tell, told in that uh, book the Art of War uh, in that uh, the aggressive warfare as like uh, being hostile with the neighbors and everything was followed by the Chinese policies. So that's all with regard to this LU and in this LU we have seen about a CPC and we have seen about why the CCP, CPC is in news and we have also seen about the background of this Communist Party of China. So that's all for today's LU and have a nice day. Thank you.